Hello and welcome to today's webinar. My name is Carmen Lanson. I will be answering any questions you may have uh, in regards to the Slido. For today's webinar, we will be using Slido's embedded app for polls and Q&A. Look for it to pop up on the right side of your screen. You can also participate on your mobile device by scanning the QR code on the slide. If you experience any technical difficulties, reach out using the Q&A section within the Slido app in WebEx. Leading today's webinar is Cisco Distinguished Speaker and Senior Developer Evangelist, Phil Belanti, along with Developer Evangelist and App Hub and Partner Support Aficionado Giosanini. Joining them is Adam Weeks, WebEx Developer Evangelism Team Manager, and we have a special guest, Michael with Cassava. Um, and we will be using the Q&A session later on to answer any questions. Before we get into today's, today's topic with Phil, Adam will be sharing some things to look out for. Take it away, Adam. Sure, thank you, Carmen. Uh, just a couple of quick news and updates for, for you all for developers. Uh, one thing we wanted to point out was that we have a uh, a WebEx developer beta program. Uh, and if you haven't been able to join it yet, please do. We've got the link down below. Uh, we'll also throw that in the chat for us. Uh, but right now we've got uh, our web calling SDK. So if you want to build, if you're a WebEx calling customer and you want to embed uh, some WebEx calling functionality into your web applications, we've got a web calling SDK beta that's going on. It's got a lot of new functionality uh, for you to try out. And next, the big news is, if you haven't heard yet, is that WebEx One is happening next week. Uh, it may be a little too late to register for and book your travel for in person, but we also have a virtual option that you can sign up for on WebExOne.com. And we're excited to share all of the new products and announcements that are gonna be happening at WebEx One. This is the first time we are actually doing it live. So we're really excited about having everyone out there uh, in Anaheim and seeing everyone out there next week. So with that, I will pass it over to you, Phil. Great. Thank you, Adam. Hi, everybody. Thank you very much for joining today's webinar. Um, my name is Phil Belanti. I'm based in Orlando, Florida. Uh, I came into Cisco uh, in 2015 uh, through uh, acquisition from a company called Trobo. Uh, we were a communication platform as a service, so uh, you know one of our big competitors was Twilio. Um, but I was part of the team that uh, helped launch the, the first version of you know, the WebEx APIs, which was then called the Spark APIs. Um, so actually, a, a lot of the APIs we're going to be talking about today were, were part of that initial launch. So I'm actually very happy and uh, to be talking about these again. It's been a little while, so um, looking forward to the. Uh, the session today, but uh, oops, let me get back to the agenda here. Uh, so we'll be talking about like the messaging APIs, uh, and then we'll talk about like bots and messaging applications, um, and uh, WebEx buttons and cards, uh, which really enhance uh, you know the bot functionality, um, and then some developer resources uh, so people can get started using them right away. Uh, but let's uh, head over to our poll here uh, results just to see. What some people thought about, you know, describe your ideal chatbot personality. Um, let's see, we get here over to the live polls. Yeah, it looks like helpful is the big, big winner for today. And I know that would probably be, you know, my choice to, uh, you know, building bots that people actually want to use. I think that's kind of like the idea for chatbots. Uh, you know, so, you know, coming up with a good idea for a bot that's actually helpful in people's workflows. Yep. That's the whole idea behind these things. So, um, I know friendly and witty, that's all important too, but, you know, under, underneath everything, it's gotta be helpful, you know, give it, give it something that, uh, I see a, I see a lot of, uh, snarky, sarcastic and spicy. So <laughs> uh, <laughs> people like, people like their uh, chat bots a, a little with a little more uh, flavor to them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. And we're going to talk about, uh, you know, how you can, you know, add these kind of things, to, uh, you know, to your bots and stuff like that to, uh, to make them optimized. So people can, you know, you know, enjoy using them, uh, as well as, you know, get uh, work done better. All right. So let's get back over to our presentation and start off with, uh, the WebEx messaging APIs. Okay, so 
First, we'll talk about just WebEx messaging on one slide here quickly. You know, WebEx messaging provides either asynchronous or real-time communication, uh, allowing team members to have instant conversations and share updates, make decisions quickly. You know, it's a very secure offering uh, where users, you know, can create spaces and teams to collaborate, share files, access meeting calendars, whiteboard together, and stay informed. Um, you know, but what really takes WebEx messaging to the next level are, you know, third-party bots and integrations, you know, and that allows users uh, to connect and work uh, with their preferred tools, you know, without leaving WebEx, you know, stay where you're doing most of your work already. Uh, and this is all made possible by a very rich set of APIs uh, that can be leveraged by developers to automate almost anything in WebEx messaging. So this matrix here represents basically well, all the essential APIs in WebEx messaging, you know, and that's you know, managing messages, messaging spaces, you know, the members of the space, uh, getting webhook event notifications and more. Uh, you know, these APIs are RESTful, so they're utilizing the HTTP methods that developers love, get, post, put, and delete. So uh, the schema is very straightforward and easy to use. Um, but essentially, they, you know, that's what we're working with here in messaging. But the first place to, you know, to start going to, to get more information about these APIs, um, you know, uh, see some really good guides and quick starts is our, uh, is our refreshed developer portal. Uh, that's at developer.webex.com. Um, you know, starting, we have a really nice uh, redesigned homepage that was designed based on a lot of our community's feedback. But, you know, the developer portal also has, a, you know, optimized sign-up flow, a completely revamped card-based layout for our document, uh, documentation landing page. Um, but, you know, this is also where you can obtain your bot accounts. So and we're going to talk about that. Um, and also where you can configure other types of applications like integrations, uh, you know, manage all your application deployments and also link up with our awesome developer support team, you know, which is dedicated just for uh, developers like you, uh, you know, and uh, they're, they're awesome. You know, they're, they're super responsive. It's not like your typical technical support. Uh, we're just here to help developers um, overcome any challenges, answer questions, things like that. So um, that's your first place you'll want to start going. But uh, let's talk about creating a message with the, the WebEx APIs. Uh, so using the APIs to create a message is actually pretty easy. You know, so you know, here uh, we're sending a JSON document via an HTTP post uh, to the messages API. Uh, and you know that contains a room ID and that pertains to the space that the message should actually go in and the text of the message. So you know that's all there is to it to to send a message inside of a of a WebEx space. And then once you send that request, the API responds with the document indicating you know an ID of the message, uh, the room ID of the space it was created in, uh, the space type, you know whether it's a group message or if it was a direct, um, you know the text content on the time uh, stamp the message was sent. So if there was like an error, for example, like uh, maybe we forgot the room ID or sent it to a space that, you know, we weren't authorized to send a, uh, a message in, it would have responded with an error code instead of, uh, you know, this type of message um, telling you that you can't post, you know, without a space ID or room ID. But another feature of WebEx messaging are, are tabs, uh, and they allow users to launch web apps or websites inside of a WebEx space. So um, you have, you know, some kind of web application or website that's, uh, you know, follow along with the topic of that space. Um, you can quickly add that. Uh, we have a, an API endpoint that's just the room tabs API. You just send the room ID, uh, which is the space you want to create it in, uh, along what you want to name that tab. Uh, and the URL of that uh, web app or website uh, just in one request, and that's all there is to it. So um, that's another really cool feature of bots. Uh, they can just add a website to a, a messaging space. So let's talk about uh, bots and messaging apps. You know, so when you know we say bots, you know, what what, what do we mean by that? You know, so. Uh, in WebEx, a, a bot is just like a regular user account in that it has its own identity within WebEx and, and users can message them directly. They can add them to a group space or they can, you know, message, like, like I said, you can message it one-on-one. -on -one. Um, bots have a little badge 
that's right inside their avatar, uh, right inside the WebEx client that indicates to users that they're interacting with a bot instead of a human. Uh, but another difference is that bots have permissions to perform tests uh, on the messaging APIs pretty much exclusively. You know, bots on their own can't schedule meetings or make calls or, or, or generally act on behalf of other users. Um, you know, you have to have something else behind that. So um, because bot applications have limited capabilities as far as the APIs go, um, the, you know, the WebEx developer portal makes it very easy for developers to create a bot uh, and get the API token you know, necessary to build one. Uh, but since it's easy to create a bot and they only use a very limited set of APIs, which is basically those one that was on that matrix I showed earlier, they're considered the easiest type of WebEx application to build. You know, building a bot is a great way for developers to start getting familiar with WebEx extensibility um, because they have such a low barrier to entry. Um, and you can see on this uh, on this the screenshot, um, this is like a, the Cisco acronym bot, which is pretty popular with us here in Cisco. Uh, we love to throw acronyms around. We got thousands of them. Um, they usually begin with the letter C. Uh, so and uh, so when someone starts throwing an acronym we're not familiar with, but we know it's you know something Cisco centric, we'll just give it to the bot to say, hey, you know what's you know, what's this acronym mean? Um, and it's much easier than looking up in Google, which may give you 10 or 20 different results of the same type of acronym. So this is something that we find very helpful. So this is a good example of a helpful bot. So to create a, a, a WebEx bot account, um, it's very simple. Just basically four steps here. First we'll do is log into developer.webex.com. And then once you're logged in, uh, and again, you, anybody can log in as long as you have a, a WebEx account. So you don't need a special account for this. Any, if you already have a WebEx account, just log in with your regular credentials. Once you're logged in, on the top right corner, there's your avatar in WebEx. Just click that avatar. And then once you click the avatar, um, you just basically select My WebEx Apps. And then on the application screen, uh, you'll see a blue button up on the top that says Create a New App. If you already created apps before, that's where all your apps are listed. Um, but you'll see that uh, create a new app right there. And uh, once you get to the apps page, look for uh, the bot option and then select create a bot. Um, there's a bunch of other different application types on there, like integration, guest issuer. Um, so you just look for the one that says bot. Uh, and then well, once you get to the next page, you're just presented with a web form that you just need to fill out. You know, give the bot a name, you know, description, an icon. Um, but once you complete all that, you're going to be issued a bot access token, which is like a long alphanumeric string um, that you want to, you know, keep to yourself and save it. Uh, uh, because, well, once you do have that bot access token, um, you're going to need to send that with every request um, for that bot. So when it wants to use uh, the WebEx APIs um, in the request to the API, um, it has to use that uh, authorization token. So um, so we use that in a header called authorization, you know, and then you just put in bearer and then a long alphanumeric string. Um, and that uh, both identifies and authenticates the bot with the WebEx platform. Um, so before the API call can operate, WebEx not only checks if the bearer token is valid, but also it has to determine if the API request is allowed at all. So, for example, if a bot tries to create a message and set a space it's not already a member of, because it actually has to be added as a member of that space, WebEx is going to reject that post as, uh, as unauthorized. And let's go to the next slide, Opal. Um, let's see here. We probably all use some kind of chatbot before, but you know, rank these different types of chatbots uh, by how useful they are to you. You know, we have like you know maybe a customer service or support. You know, we we have like virtual agents. I know if I didn't receive my Amazon package, I have to use their chatbot first. Um, you know, education and training tools. Uh, that's another really really good one. Um, and then uh, maybe a controller for a third party app. So. You know, maybe you have a third party app running someplace else, um, but you want to be able to control that what's inside of a chat bot. In virtual assistants, I would think it's maybe like the holy grail 
you know, those are the ones where you can talk to them or, or chat with them, just like you're talking to a human agent um, you know, using natural language. And we'll talk a little bit about that, too. Yep, I think most people agree we are with the customer service and a virtual agents are the most popular ones. I agree. Okay. And I'll leave that one open, but I'll jump back over to the presentation here. So what makes a WebEx chatbot? And you know, we, we know most of this already. So in a nutshell, creating a WebEx bot is pretty straightforward. You know, again, as we mentioned, you log in developer.webex.com, you create a bot account and you get the access token. But since that bot account's not gonna do anything on its own, you know, we have to give it a brain. So uh, for bots, the brain is the, the code found in your application. So you write an application this application needs to be hosted somewhere on the public internet, you know, either on your own web server or in you know, a hosted provider, you know, like AWS or something like that. Uh, but once you combine those two components, you now have a bot that can work in WebEx. So pretty simple equation. But outside of that simple equation, you know, what makes bots perform even better? You know, one strong answer to that is artificial intelligence or, or AI. Um, so Looks like, uh, let's look at how AI can add some superpowers to your bots. Um, one way is through natural language processing or NLP, uh, you'll hear uh, referred to. Um, but, you know, uh, artificial intelligence powered NLP can enhance the bot's ability to understand and respond to user queries more uh, accurately. And that's how you build those virtual assistants. You know, it allows users to have a more lifelike chat with a virtual agent. Uh, NLP can also uh, be used to provide things like, you know, automated language translations. So you can, you know, have your bot work anywhere in the world. Um, there are numerous NLP providers out there. You know, some of the big ones are like IBM and Google, you know, just to name a couple. But, um, you know, but another good way uh, artificial intelligence can help out your chatbot is through sentiment analysis. And this enables bots to gauge the emotions behind users' messages, you know, showcase, you um, you know, cases where bots can respond differently based on this sentiment, uh, such as providing empathy or redirecting to a human agent if needed. You know, there are also you know, several third party sentiment analysis tools out there, like uh, such ones like Idiomatic, uh, Talkwalker, Brandwatch. Those are just a few, you know, ones that, uh, that you know, are very, very popular. Um, and another way, which is a very powerful one, is machine learning or ML for training bots. Um, ML algorithms can be leveraged to train bots, allowing them to continuously improve and adapt based on user interactions automatically. Um, so for example, machine learning can be used for building smart assistants uh, capable of learning from user activity. It can you know, also enhance the user experience by personalizing the chat bot responses um, based on the user's preferences, you know, their history, their context. Um, you know, this can be used for personalized recommendations, uh, tailored content delivery, adaptive conversational flows, you know, so, you know, IBM Watson, Databricks, Veritone, those are some good uh, machine learning engine providers out there. And then lastly here, um, there's also intelligent bot analytics, um, or metrics tracking, using artificial intelligence to provide valuable insights into bot usage patterns, user preferences and performance metrics. Um, this can be used for tracking things like user satisfaction. You know, you can help identify bottlenecks inside of your flow um, so you can optimize it from there and predicting user behavior based on the historical data, you know, improving your bot interactions through that. You know, we can have a lot of other third parties that, that do bot analytics. I know like Google Dialogflow does. Um, there's also some flat, platforms called ChatFuel and BotPress. Um, but there's, there's a really, there's a lot more out there too, but those are some of the popular ones. Uh, but, you know, putting these together, you can really add some really nice intelligence to your bot, um, and make them you know, easier for the end users. But webhook events is really where, you know, bots come to life. You know, webhooks allow your bot to be notified, um, by the WebEx platform when a specific event occurs. So... 
first thing a bot app will need to do is subscribe to the events it needs to be notified about in order to work. You know, tell the WebEx uh, the URL to um, for their application to send those events to. So it'll do that by sending a post request to the Webhooks API. And then uh, the body of those requests contain the, the resource and events it will subscribe to. So here, let's subscribe to like three different events. Uh, the app it wants to be notified when a new message is created. And also when a new membership is created, that's when a new person joins the space. Um, and when a message gets deleted. So we have those three events that we registered for here. So now when those particular events happen, the WebEx platform sends those notification data to the URL that was specified by the bot, you know, when the, well, when the webhook was registered, and that allows the bot to utilize some logic to take action on those events, you know, such as when you hear a new, uh, see that a new message is created, it can reply to that message. But a bot can also be deployed as what's called a, a service app. Uh, and service apps are, are tied to a WebEx organization instead of an individual user account. So, you know, when I create a bot, um, you know, even though the bot account can act independently, it's still um, part of my account. It's, it's tied to mine. But, you know, when apps, uh, you know, are associated just user accounts like that, you know, if, if that user who created that bot happens to leave the company, for example, you know, the organization's going to have to take steps to transfer that bot to another account. Or in the worst case scenario, they're going to have to recreate it again. Um, and all of a sudden your bot just stops working. What happened? Oh, Norm left. So, well, I guess we're going to have to figure out what, you know, how to get that bot back. So um, the service apps allow, uh, you know, organization to keep their important apps running smoothly, independent of any user account. Um, so you can find out more about service apps uh, for your critical applications uh, right on our developer portal of the URL there. But I think that, you know, a, another great way to make WebEx chatbots better is by using buttons and cards. So I think that's going to be like probably the most important topic of uh, this webinar today. So let's explore what these are now. So WebEx buttons and cards, they provide a way for applications, you know, like bots or integrations to share and collect information in WebEx through a graphical interface. So users can interact with the app in you know, more intuitive ways. So for example, Instead of a bot collecting information from a user through a tedious amount of questions over a regular text, um, they could present a web form to collect all the data in one step. You know, cards can display rich information, including images, formatted text, links. Uh, they can also be used to collect detailed information for WebEx users that'd be difficult to, to obtain using just a purely text-based interface. You know, you have to ask a question over and over and over again you know, until you finally get drilled down and get the information you need from somebody. Um, but the cards can also, you know, uh, showcase important information, you know, like event details, updates, announcements, and it's in a more visually appealing way, you know, in a nice, a nice uh, format instead of just pure text. Um, but WebEx applications can add cards to messaging spaces by just including a card attachment when posting a message, and I'll get into that. But uh, these card attachments are using Microsoft's um, adaptive cards specification. Um, so they open source their, uh, their card specification and that's exactly what WebEx uses. Um, and that defines the content and the layout of the card. Uh, adaptive cards and WebEx messaging provide, you know, um, you know bot uh, applications with a much richer, more intuitive way to interact, you know, beyond just changing text commands. And that's essentially what they are. Um, but a card in WebEx is defined by creating a JSON object, and that describes the various adaptive card schema elements that should be displayed. Now, you know, WebEx is currently using adaptive cards version 1.3. Um, so these cards can be used inside group or, or direct messages. You know, that just depends on your workflow. Uh, but the nice thing is the WebEx client renders these cards with the same look and feel across every platform. So if you're on a PC or a Mac, Android or iOS and on a mobile device, uh, this lets developers put more focus on the content of the interaction of the bot, you know, when designing the card without having to worry how they're going to be looking uh, across these different platforms. Okay, I, I, right now I'd like to um, 
hand it over to one of our great partners, uh, Michael Seeley from Cassava. Uh, they built a really cool bot uh, that's using buttons and cards, and I'd uh, love to ha have him uh, share some of those, uh, uh, some of the information about his bot. So, Michael, you wanted to talk a little bit about what your your application does? Yeah. Michael, I can't hear you yet. Hi, Phil, can you hear me? Yep, now I got you. Okay. First of all, Phil, um, thank you for the invitation today to speak on Cassava's integration with WebEx messaging. Before I jump into things, one of the points that you made so far is that third-party integrations allows users to stay where they are. And I can't overstress how important that is in today's asynchronous way of communicating. But before I jump ahead, i uh, just like to lay some groundwork. My name is Michael Seeley, and I'm the founder and principal developer of Cassava. Tyler Phillips, who is a member of the Partnership and Integration WebEx team, reached out to me at the end of March with an opportunity to integrate Cassava with WebEx. Now, what is Cassava? Cassava takes an innovative approach to help organizations create and distribute in-house training programs in the platforms where their members are most at home and productive, which is the point that Phil made earlier. One of the other things we just saw in the Slido poll is the categories in which apps are helpful. And education and training was one of those categories, and that's where Cassava fits in. Naturally, I saw, I saw WebEx messaging as a perfect match for the delivery of this kind of asynchronous training. After all, we know that each day, users spend a great deal of time in WebEx meetings, in WebEx messaging. So the opportunity to also have these users consume their compliance, onboarding, workplace culture, and other recurrent training in these platforms seems to be a no-brainer. I was very excited and jumped straight into the work. Now, the first thing that caught my attention was the news of the adaptive cards framework for buttons and cards. Phil just point out how the adaptive cards is a Microsoft specification that WebEx uses. Now, having already implemented Cassava in another platform, actually, it was Microsoft Teams, using the adaptive card framework was a breeze to render rich interactive cards for Cassava in WebEx and it cut down the development time by probably, I would say, maybe 70% of the work that was needed because everything that I needed for adaptive care support was already in place. Along the way, I integrated Cassava with the messaging REST APIs to get access to things like rooms, teams, and memberships in particular. Now, on the webhook side, as Phil pointed out before, I added a webhook resource to be notified when rooms were created. This is important because it allowed Cassava to send a proactive welcome message during the onboarding phase, which is a critical touch point with any type of bot or integration working on a, in a platform. I also hooked into the messages resource creation event to add shortcut text-based commands for things like help and other simple little commands that a user can trigger from the command line. Probably the most significant webhook integration was the attachments resource creation event. Now what this webhook allows you, allows you to do is to trigger callbacks from these adaptive cards. So whenever a user is interacting with a button, a selection, or some type of rich uh, feedback mechanism, that triggers a call to the backend where we're able to identify the user, 
understand the context and render the appropriate response to them. So the idea of combining the messaging framework with the webhook API is what allows you to really present a very comprehensive solution on the WebEx platform in a very easy manner. Now I said ease and the entire development process on WebEx from the initial contact all the way through to development and submission and approval took probably around six weeks. And that is, so Cassava integration on WebEx was my third integration and six weeks was nothing. It was like a breeze to actually get this done so quickly. What folks who are considering this type of work also need to take into account is that it's just, it's not just the development phase. You need really good documentation to help you. And the portal documentation is just terrific, but you also need a helpful team along the way. And I got that from many members of the WebEx. Tyler Phillips, as I mentioned before, and Joe Zanini, as well as um, support tickets as well. But then there's one other aspect that you might not be thinking about as part of the whole process, and that is the submission phase. And sometimes that is a black hole where you submit an app to a platform and you have no feedback other than a couple of weeks later, it's rejected for all of these reasons. WebEx was a totally different game changer here in that you are allowed to have this pre-submission touch point to make sure that all of your assets are in place so that when you do actually go through the submission phase, it is much smoother and easier with few surprises. So this is what I'm saying. The entire process was under a few weeks and that was only made possible because of the support that's built in to this entire WebEx platform. So for those of you who might wish to try Cassava today, you can add our WebEx integration. And yes, we do need an integration and not a bot because we need to be able to take action on behalf of other users. And that's what distinguishes when you will reach for a bot versus something that's a little more complex, not that much, but it's just a little more work you have to do or think about. But that's the nice thing is that you have those two options to go with. So you can grab our WebEx integration, register it with your account, publish our onboarding demo, and quickly learn how Cassava works by actually interacting with it on the platform. And some of the screenshots you can see here is examples of the adaptive cars and the type of rich UI you can actually build and deliver to users, whether it be content, assessments, and feedback. Yep, that's WebEx and Cassava. Great. Michael, thank you so much. Yeah, we really, really love your integration. It's it's pretty awesome. So um, we'll, we'll give everybody the information about our App Hub at the end here, but apphub.webex.com, uh, check out the uh, Cassava integration there. Thank you, Michael. But uh, so as you probably already can see, you know, Webex cards are, are very flexible. You know, it allows developers to create highly customizable, you know, interactive cards that can be used to present information, images, actions, you know, on the messaging platform. Um, so these cards can be used to enhance your user engagement, display notifications, facilitate specific workflows, uh, much, much easier than plain text. Uh, even cards that, you know, only show informational messages, such as like the current weather conditions or flight status or internal service alerts really stand out over text. Um, you know, cards that can also collect feedback, responses or preference options from users in one interaction, you know, making bots easy to work with and giving them a higher chance of being utilized. But to generate a card in WebEx, you know, we talked about this a little bit, but let's kind of get the flow here. Uh, so you'll need to include the cards JSON uh, in a post request to the WebEx Messaging's API. Um, so a message request to send a card looks, you know, much like a regular message request, and you know, except that the uh, request body 
is going to include an attachments attribute. Um, and that includes the data that tells WebEx how to render a card. Uh, the attachments parameter is an array, uh, and that's going to include uh, a single object made up of two fields. Oops, I kind of jumped ahead there. Um, so first is the content type, you know, and that's always set to, you know, what it says here, application slash VND dot Microsoft dot card dot adaptive. Um, that's what you're going to need to put uh, on any uh, message that needs to uh, include a card. Uh, and then, uh, then there's the content of that attachment. Uh, and this is your card's design JSON code. This tells WebEx how to render the card. Uh, so when sending the card data, the WebEx message object must also include either a text or markdown field. And that's just in case the client somehow can't render the card. And it's kind of like your backup. Uh, this text should convey information about the card's content and provide an alternative method to interact with the card's actions. But uh, but essentially, that's it. That's how you send a card or generate a card inside of WebEx through the APIs. Um, but what's included in this JSON object? You know, so when designing the layout of a card, all the data is sent in the body of an adaptive card JSON object, but this data includes inputs, you know, and that's used to display the form fields on the card uh, so the user can type in and submit information so these input properties can include like text, or date, toggle, choice set. Um, but uh, the, the next one are container objects. And that kind of groups all the uh, things together uh, to optimize the design of the card. So we have action set, column set, container, fact set, image set. Those are all container objects. Uh, and that keeps everything nice and organized inside the card. Uh, but the JSON object of the card also contains elements. Uh, and that's where the content of, uh, uh, is presented inside the card. So you'll have a text block or a rich text block, an image. You know, those were all um, what the actual content is that's contained inside of the card. Uh, but all of these used together are used for the layout and the design to generate a card in WebEx. But we recently uh, added some new properties in WebEx cards that were announced last month. Uh, you know, in the, the first one is uh, vertical content alignment property, and that lets developers fine tune the vertical alignment, uh, the content within the card elements. Uh, so the, the values for that can be the top, the center, or the bottom. Um, but when a value is not specified, uh, the vertical content alignment is inherited from the parent container. But if there's no parent container, um, uh, the vertical contain, uh, alignment set is going to be defaulting to top. Uh, but uh, the next is the action toggle visibility property. Uh, and that lets developers define the actions that toggle the visibility of specific card elements. You know, and that allows the presentation of information in a more organized and user-friendly manner. Um, so you can also make specific actions for show and hide elements instead of just toggling. Uh, but uh, you can get a lot more information about, the, about this in uh, a blog post that was posted on September 13th uh, by our leader, Adam Weeks. So that's at developer.webex.com slash blogs. So you can check that out. It's um, some of the recent ones. So it's, it was just posted on September 13th. Um, but to make designing a card easier, there's a very handy card designer tool on the WebEx for Developer portal. And that provides like a drag and drop interface to build the card. But the best part is it automatically generates the JSON object for the card that you're you're creating there, um, you know, making it a step to implement right inside your app. So as soon as your card is looking good in the designer and you built it the right way, you just click copy the card payload button so you can move your design to your application and start building up the code to send it to WebEx. Um, so it makes things much easier to do that. Um, and maybe you might need to tweak it a little bit here and there. This is much better than just building out the JSON from scratch. Well, we've been talking a lot about cards, but what about buttons? So buttons are well, one of the ways that users can interact with cards, and the only way your application can get notified about the interaction. So as a designer, you create buttons by adding an action to your card. You know, and WebEx supports three types of actions. So we have the action open URL. So when uh, when it's clicked, the, the client's going to open up uh, the user's browser uh, to the specified URL. So whatever your system default browser is. Um, so if we do that for oops, for that one, 
you know, for this one, you maybe want to have them check into a flight, then it'll open up uh, the airline's URL to get checked in. Uh, the next one is the action show card. Um, so when click the client will expand the card to show a sub card associated uh, with it, the activity. Um, so, you know, you can see there, there's a really good uh, example right here. Someone uh, selects burgers, say, hey, would you like cheese with that in that burger? Um, but uh, again, that's the action show card, which can actually display a sub card. And then finally, the action submit, uh, you know, which is probably the most widely used one. So, you know, because when that's clicked, the application that posted the card will get a notification and that includes any, days, uh, any data associated with that button uh, or that action, um, plus, you know, any info that's collected from any of the input elements on that card. Um, so if you have them filling out like a web form, they, you know, they fill out each of those fields, they hit submit, and you get all that information in one interaction. Um, but, uh, you know, for, uh, for, you know, to get the notifications about those actions, you know, the app has to use the webhooks API to create a webhook, you know, much like Michael was talking about earlier. Um, and this is for the attachment actions resource that's created to receive notifications about card actions. So let's go through the flow a little bit here. We have, you know, a bot application. Uh, we have the WebEx APIs. We have the actual WebEx client uh, and the end user of that WebEx client. So in this case, you know, um, you know the, the app uses the WebEx API to create the webhook. Um, it's used, again, the attachment actions resource um, and the created event um, to receive notifications about that card. Uh, then the card is ready, uh, uh, the app is ready to send the card at that point. So by using the messages API, uh, including the attachment, like we saw earlier, um, you know, with the card JSON data. So we're going to be sending that in that request. So, uh, you know, once the API receives that request, uh, then the client renders the card and, and that's presented to the end user. So let's we'll say in this example, it's an interactive card that includes action buttons, so, you know, such as to submit form data. So when the user clicks on that action button on the card, um, it's basically going to you know, trigger a webhook event uh, that the app created at the beginning of the flow. And the webhook API sends the webhook payload to the app. Uh, however, the webhook's body is not going to include the form submission, you know, since that's actually encrypted data, just like all the other messaging. Um, so to do that, the app now has to retrieve the submission data by using the get attachment action details API. Um, and, you know, once it actually gets those uh, attachment action details, the app can process that action accordingly. Uh, and then it can start anew, the app can send a new card, um, you know, for the client to render, you know, based on the information it received through that uh, submit. So that's essentially how the webhooks work uh, when you're, uh, when you're making interactive cards. Oops. Um, but another way um, to make cards more powerful is to add some click to actions inside the card. You know, these are essentially hyperlinks that are embedded inside the content of the card. Um, so, you know, these actions can be used to, for example, open apps like your email client or your default web browser just by specifying a URL, you know, the regular hyperlink. You can also create actions to make calls, uh, like using standard formatting calling links like tell colon or sip colon. So WebEx is going to try its best to open, you know, those standard calling links within WebEx. However, uh, you, maybe you already have like another soft phone client on your, on your machine or some other app that creates conflicts for these links because it's going to try to open these as well. So, you know, that's why I kind of say that the results may vary there, um, you know, depending on, you know, what's on your, on, on your system already. But uh, developers can always explicitly stay with inside the WebEx client by using, you know, the WebEx team syntax that you see here to open up a chat or place a call inside of WebEx, you know, explicitly. Um, but there's actually a really good blog post about this that was written, I think it was last year, but it's up on the developer portal and the blogs. It's written by uh, William Mills. He's one of our awesome technical solution specialists. Uh, it's titled... Uh, build a click to call shortcut using adaptive cards in WebEx. Um, so you can get a lot more information about how you can build these type of cards too, 
um, you know, for calling enthusiasts, um, this is a really good, uh, good way to do it. Uh, so for a lot of the screenshots uh, that I used in this presentation, uh, I used the WebEx card sampler bot uh, that's available on the WebEx app hub, um, or you can simply add it to a space by just using the, the bot's address. That's card sampler at WebEx.bot. Um, you know, this bot provides WebEx users and developers with an opportunity to try several types of buttons and cards. So, uh, so for each card um, inside of the samples, the bot shows how it renders it in WebEx and it provides a description of the card elements being demonstrated there. Um, but the, the nice thing is also the bot provides a link to the source used for that card, you know, along with the description of how the original sample was modified uh, to work more effectively in a WebEx environment. So you can you actually, if you, if you like the way a card is designed and you want to just use your own content inside there, just copy the card JSON and just kind of modify it to your liking. You know, that's the best way to do it instead of starting from scratch. Um, but, you know, the best feature of this bot, in my opinion anyways, is users can send their own JSON design to see how exactly it will render inside WebEx. Um, so even in the card designer, it kind of gives you a little preview, but you don't know what exactly it's going to look like until you actually see it inside the WebEx client. Um, so users can try you know, doing this by clicking on the send my own design instead. You know, there's a little button there that says that. Um, and basically you can just paste your, your JSON, uh, your card JSON right inside there. Um, and it will just, you know, it'll just render that card right inside there. So it's a good way to see how your cards will render inside of WebEx, you know, before you actually deploy an application. Okay, so let's talk about some developer resources so uh, you can start, you know, using some buttons and cards inside of your applications. Um, the first really good one is the, the WebEx node bot framework. And that's kind of like a, a community sourced kit uh, to create WebEx bots more easily. Um, so the framework itself is based on the WebEx node.js SDK. Um, and that provides direct access um, to the SDK's objects and methods. So if we need them, uh, we can just grab them right from the uh, uh, right from uh, this framework. Uh, but since it's based on the Node.js uh, SDK, uh, it makes WebSockets available as a mechanism for receiving webhooks events, you know, such as incoming messages, you know, and you know that has several advantages over traditional webhooks. You know, primarily avoiding the challenges in you know, provisioning a public and reachable bot URL. You know, maybe the content uh, for the card is behind a firewall or something like that, but you still want to have the bot be able to reach it. Um, and, and WebSockets, you know, allow you to do that. Um, it also provides an easy to use uh, native JavaScript objects and methods for easily handling or responding to messages. Um, it has a bunch of handy functions for sending adaptive cart messages uh, and managing the result of an attachment actions right out of the box. Um, so you don't have to worry about like registering webhooks and things like that. It takes care of all that stuff for you. But before we get onto this last resource um, or this next resource, I'm going to do one more Slido poll. You know, has anybody here ever created a chatbot in WebEx? That's okay if you haven't, but today would be a good day to start. <laughs> but it, well, I'm, I'm happy to see that it seems like the majority of people have created one already. That's awesome. Wow, almost 70%, pretty good. All right. Now for those that, you know, haven't created a you know, their own chatbot or deployed it, their own chatbot inside WebEx yet. I'll show you a good way you can do that. So I uh, encourage you all, if, if you haven't created one yet before, uh, to check out this blog post I wrote a few years ago. And I actually just recently updated. So it's actually on one of the more recent blogs now. It's called From Zero to WebEx Chatbot in 15 Minutes. It'll be no longer than 15 minutes and you could have your own chat bot ready to go. Um, so this blog takes you step-by-step step for creating a bot and deploying a, a working sample application. Um, it, it utilizes cards too, 
Um, so he, he actually has a very intuitive way to start using cards. Um, again, you don't have to worry about the web hooks or anything like that. It's taken care of right inside the framework. Um, but again, we use the Node-Bot framework for this one. That's how it, it's possible. Um, it keeps everything nice and simple, straight and straightforward. Um, but ultimately, you know, the sample app can be extended or modified to create your own type of chatbot. So you kind of use it as your template to get going. Um, so I encourage everyone to go check that out. It's right on our developer portal inside the blog section. 15 minutes, you got your own, got your own WebEx chatbot. But there's also an advanced way to build rich cards by using Microsoft's templating SDKs. Um, so this is a great uh, for instances where you need to change a card's content uh, based on what's happening inside of a WebEx space. And your app has to dynamically modify the appropriate field values in your JSON before submitting it to WebEx and, you know, to be rendered there. Um, but, you know, that can get a little tricky. So, you know, to make that easier, the templating SDKs uh, separates the data from the layout inside of the adaptive card. Um, so this is accomplished, you know, basically with functions that are provided inside that SDK, and it dynamically replaces the templatized cards values with some, you know, very similarly named object data. You know, it's basically the the, the templates that you uh, use and you uh, you build. They're, they're they're really meant to be reused, so you can start using uh, to build other cards from there. Um, so it becomes easier to create cards once you have that template all set up. Um, but, uh, to, you know, really to learn more about all the, uh, those SDKs and how to start working with them, just check out the URL on the bottom of the slide here. Um, but that gives you a way to start using some advanced options inside of cards. And another great resource is our Webex for Developers Community Forum. Um, this is the home where you can connect and learn from Webex developers like you and also engage with WebEx experts from Cisco, share your ideas, search for answers to your top of mind questions, a lot of friendly banter over there too. Um, so this is a really good place to, um, to go if you just have some quick questions or want to help with some strategy around building cards or bots, anything you'd like. Um, so go check that out, uh, the WebEx developer community forum. Um, and um, here's some also some uh, some helpful resources. Um, you know we have uh, a, you know a great uh, developer portal like I mentioned before. Um, and uh, as uh, Adam mentioned at the uh, at the top of the session, uh, we have a WebEx developer beta program. So if you want to uh, get some early access into some new features and try them out before they're released. Um, we encourage everybody to join the WebEx developer beta. Uh, but on GitHub, we have a lot of great samples. Uh, we have the official page at uh, github.com uh, slash WebEx. Uh, we have some great sample applications listed on there too at the WebEx samples page. And then we also have our community curated uh, repo on GitHub, uh, WebEx community. Um, and that's where you can find the, the NodeBot framework as well. Um, but, uh, and if, for, for those who like to use devices, we have, uh, their own, um, they have their own, uh, developer portal at Cisco OS, uh, or room OS, uh, and, uh, again, that listed on here, make sure, um, uh, for, uh, all your, your third party integrations and bots to check out the app hub and that's apphub.webex.com. And with that, we are at the end of the session. So thank you very much. I don't know if we 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 have like a few minutes here for some questions, if we have any. Thanks, Phil. Yeah, we do have a few questions. So let's jump into those. For those that uh, for those folks that have questions that haven't asked them yet, you can jump over to Slido's on the right hand side of your screen and and drop your questions there. So we had some great questions um, during the presentation and I'll start with the quick ones. Uh, will the session be recorded? Yes, this webinar and all webinars can be found at developer.webex.com forward slash webinars. Um, yeah, you can find them all there. And get a couple requests for things. So embedded apps in the sidebar is a nice feature. I can use 
the always on function with max three apps, it would be good if the number could be increased or you can set unlimited apps always on. You can define only max three in the app right now. Um, and are there considerations to optimize this? So uh, currently um, we are maxed out at three to help reduce impact on our user resources, but you are welcome to put in a request for more at uh, Cisco collab customer dot ideas dot aha dot io forward slash and I'll put that in the chat so everybody can use it. You can put in any of your requests in there. Thank you. That was a good question. I'll shoot a question over to the team. Will bot uh, will bot support the adaptive cards? Webex not supporting the GIF media inside the adaptive card. Team, would you like to address that question? Yeah, yeah I, I can oh, go ahead, address Adam. that if you like. Yeah, the uh, so right now the uh, the the gifts are supported uh, in in the Mac world. They are not technically supported, but they do render on the Mac client. They do not render on the other clients, so we say that they are not supported. So right right now. Um, they are not officially supported, so, but if you would like to see that support, yeah, use that uh, AHA link that we've dropped in the chat, and you can that way it, those features can get to the top of our product managers list. Yeah, thanks, Adam. Uh, another question uh, over to the team. When will preformatted text or code blocks be supported in adaptive cards, or will it ever? Yeah, on that one we did. We've got um, there is a the functionality to have a preformatted text. Uh, I did drop a, a code block to show, showcasing that, and you can try it out with that uh, card sampler tool that that Phil had posted. So it should be in there for you. And if it's not, you can check with our uh, developer support team to see why it's not working for you. I have time for one more quick question. I heard that there will be an API for reactions. Is there a release date? No. Not no release date yet, but yes, uh, that is a, a highly requested feature, including by all of us here on the evangelism team. Mm -hmm. So yeah, uh, I, I have definitely uh, push up on on aha uh, to get that those requests in for our product managers. Yeah, we're all looking forward to that one. <laughs> yeah. And with that, we are at time. Thank you all for joining us today. Uh, thank you for your time. Be sure to pop over to the WebEx Developer Community Forum at cs.co forward slash WebEx Developer Community, where you can connect with the WebEx Developer Evangelism Team and Support Team, and they can support you with any challenges you run into while building or running your apps on WebEx. And with that, thank you all for your time and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.